Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a Squirrel Saturday. Uh, if you are joining on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch right now, obviously it's not. I'm not trying to hoodwink you with that. But this is a fun deck. This is Dwarves. Uh, not feeling any more inventive about titles than that. Uh, we are rocking Tactical Advantage. I like it a little bit more right now just for the extra points. Some games are very close. Uh, and I don't find Crystal Skull to have all that much value in the current meta. Um, not a lot of poisons going around, and Vincent's is still lurking bushes, so don't want to just play right into a Vincent. There's also not a lot of engines here. Uh, Gabor is probably only like the real true engine, other than Xavier Moran. Um, but this deck is fun, it's all dwarfs. We're going to use Zoltan to proc a bunch of boosts onto Rowdy Dwarfs. I really like the rework on Zoltan's company, giving that armor to all dwarfs in that row. Um, Polly Dahlberg's rework as well, moving a unit and then being able to give two armor. All of that armor pairs really well with who I call the Dwarven Aglaïs. It is not Sheldon Skaggs, it is instead Yarpen Zigrin. Uh, and now this guy at the end of your turn lose armor and boost self by that much. So you can just keep armoring this bad boy up, he's going to keep boosting himself. You could, if you wanted to get really snarky with him, add in like some armor units like uh, Mantlet or Wagaberg. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, we are using Nature's Rebuke. Karathi Heatwave, you guys know I'm usually morally opposed to, but I think it's hard to get this deck to work without it. And then Oniromancy just for some consistency. Really looking for that Novogradian Justice for huge tempo uh, and also good thinning. Um, you can't really use Aileron or Broccolon Sentinel, so this is really like the only way to get good thinning in a dwarf deck. Mahakam Guards are really good. I like them a lot more than Mercenaries, for those of you unfamiliar. Mercenary is like one of the only dwarf cards we're not using. The 7 for 5s with, uh, with weak points of like taking damage when something's not working, or like Nilfgaardian Knight where you have to boost an opponent, I find to be pretty garbage right now. There's just so many 4s that play for 7. Uh, these really need some reworks, right? Especially when this is like non-dwarf is requiring not just a commitment to Scoia'tael, but also within an internal uh, species within Scoia'tael. We're not calling them races because we've all decided they are a different species, but that's perhaps for a different day. Uh, now, if you want to call them a different race, that's up to you too. We, we are accepting, we're open, uh, but just uh, just food for thought. Is Are they a different species or a different race? May, or a little bit of both? Um, I guess they, I guess the elves and humans have, uh, have made children together, so they are probably just a different race. Uh, dwarves coming out here. Let's jump into a match. Just trying to light chat on fire while we're on Twitch here. Get people to throw around their opinions, you know, share their, their wonderful thoughts and insights. Uh, but dwarves is pretty fun. I really like it. I think it's, uh, I think these are like characters that you really... You know, you have you have a feeling for, and given everything that's going on in the world, it's nice to, to think about inclusion and kindness and empathy and uh, and killing Nilf Guardians. But that's perhaps a story for a different day. Um, Mahakam Volunteers are the bricks. We keep them in our deck. I really like these uh, these pyrotechnicians, especially if you can get Zoltan's company with a Zoltan on the board. Pretty nasty combo. Uh, Mahakam Guard is nice, but not amazing. We're going to look for a Zoltan. We get one. Uh, now, one thing with Zoltan's company, you get the extra armor, but only if you control a Zoltan card. There are three of them. Zoltan Scoundrel, Zoltan Warrior, and Zoltan Cheve. Zoltan Cheve giving you resilience. Uh, Zoltan Warrior giving that boost to those Rowdy Dwarves. We miss Onero. We miss Novogradian Justice. I think it's becoming a joke on this channel. Don't put in my tutor cards because I'm never going to find value from them. Uh, looks like we're up against a dwarf deck, which is kind of hilarious. Um, all right, we're going to go for uh, Miner here. Miners and pyrotechnicians are great friends. Uh, obviously, these guys have a bunch of armor, so they're hard to chew through to damage. If you miner on them, uh, then you can boost them up by two, but also give them five armor. That way, they will not hurt themselves when they blow stuff up.
Otherwise, honestly, Dwarfs is kind of like a pretty straightforward play. I, one thing I will say, you do want to try to get... Um, do you want to try to get as many units onto a row? They, they do like row swarming. So here we go. We get him up to six. He's got five armor. We're going to try, with all the luck we have in our bodies, to hit this Mahakam Defender to force the Crystal Skull onto the same unit. But we'll play out another Pyrotechnician here just to kind of keep up the fire. Um, we don't run really any of the tempering. It is good value onto Yarpin, um, but it's not amazing. It's just kind of up to you. Now here we're gonna pull Pyrotechnician first. Uh, that's a bit of a dud. Um, now we could use this Nature's Rebuke onto this Mahakam Defender. That's gonna get him right back down. So that's what we're gonna do. Again, just want to force the kind of less than awesome play of putting a Crystal Skull onto one of the defenders. Now, Zoltan Scoundrel is quite nice to get this uh, boost into the range row or the damage into melee row. It's just like a really good way of dealing with that. Um, I think the boost is what we're probably going to be looking for given that there aren't uh, a lot of ways to damage these uh, armored dwarfs. That is what it is. Berserkers, I don't find all that valuable. Everybody gets to make their own choices. Um, Alright, here I think we're going to play Pyrotechnician. I think we want to get this out a little bit longer. We are close enough that we can make some decent tempo plays with like Polly and Scoundrel. Heatwave here on the Defender is going to find some really good value as well. I'd rather use Heat Wave onto like a, a unit with resilience. Um, I do know that the Dorvan decks don't run a lot in the way of removal. It's kind of just Heat Wave. Uh, maybe some Nature's Rebukes. That's about it. I don't have any other like nature synergy. There's no symbiosis cards here or anything like that. Just something to keep in mind. Alright, we see Zoltan's company come down. That's fine. Uh, since this is pinging off damage, we're going to go ahead and pop that. Bad luck again. Uh, I think we will use Zoltan's company just because we can use this scoundrel for good tempo. And it doesn't count as a dwarf played. Uh, Barclay L is also really good points onto a row. He's going to boost an allied unit by the number of dwarf units in this row. So right now, 6 plus himself is 7. He's just kind of like a boosting version of Yavin. Obviously, I kind of like Yavin a little bit more, but, you know, everybody gets to make their own choices. Come to Papi. All right, we're just gonna boost up this rowdy dwarf here, keep him alive. And right now, Zoltan Scoundrel plays for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 12 points, which would be just enough to close out this round. Again, we're just gonna keep putting on the pressure on the opponent. Um, I'd like to get to a position where it's really close, they opt to pass, and then we just play Gabor Zegrin. We trade into that resilience and are able to start playing dwarfs and boosting him up in round two. Call of the Forest is a different card you could use here. Again, we're using Onero because I do want that Novigradian Justice, but it can be really good to get uh, to get some of these other units out. Now, uh, Gabor is a lot of value, as I've just mentioned, with that resilience going into the next round. So we're just going to have to see how close we can get. My opponent's still getting that passive one point boost. I don't mind using Polly Dahlberg here. I 
this is an interesting trade against each other's cards where we are rocking dwarves but with slightly different decks the opponent here using call of the forest dormant agitators uh nova gradient justice coming out you've really great it. tempo play oh uh, you've done it now um really not too bad there I think we'll use Polly Dahlberg here. We just want to push off some of these dwarves. Just so we can't get so much of that dwarven row boost. We can use leader ability if we need to to get out of this. Um, but I really don't mind the Gabor play. Uh, Alright, so if we take off the, the defender... 58, 48 points. So only gets us to 51, 56. Oh, a little suboptimal both ways. little suboptimal but the win does clinch us less say Although I'm not sure how valuable that's gonna be in a game of dwarf versus dwarf all right here we're just gonna kind of be looking to get down Gavor for the carryover Normally that's what I'd be doing, although this round I think we're just going to go ahead and take the pass. Uh, although we can't do that because the opponent's plays. Um, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Uh, we'll get out Nova Gradian Justice and our Mahakam Volunteers. This should get us enough tempo to get out of the match. If not, we'll play down Gabor. He gives us some flexibility. Uh, I do, Polly Dahlberg is actually really great with, uh, Yarpin, because you can give him that two armor, it can be really valuable. Uh, I wish we would have got Oniromancy, once again. Playing again without Oniromancy is getting a little bit obnoxious, personally. Uh, but you know, you can't have everything you want in life. The opponent here just trying to count up, trying to see how they can get ahead of the 13 points without having to give up too much. Uh, Figus not going to quite do it. Figus getting 7 points and 8 point here with Gabor. We uh, won the first round, so we're just going to take the pass. Not enough way. Uh, so, did get a question in chat why we didn't lead with Gabor to ranged. Purely because I need to tighten up uh, this game. We need to get him down to three cards. Otherwise, we wasted leader ability and Karate the heat wave for nothing last round. And uh, he play, He gets boosted for every dwarf we play, and we'll play him next round. Finally getting Oniromancy. Inconvenient time. Uh, Zoltan Warrior getting us two Rowdy Dwarves. You know, uh, value but not amazing value. He, this is a great combo with these two. Um, Hakim Guard uh, does get three points here. Four points, five points. Um, and I think we can go ahead and grab Xavier Moran right off the bat. I think we'll just kind of sit on this. Uh, now, a better draw to get here is actually get these Dwarven Chariots. This will add up to three total Rowdy Dwarves if you have the Bonded triggered. Uh, and that allows Zoltan Warrior to boost those by two points each for an extra six points. It's a little bit better. Uh, mine are coming down, I'm guessing, to just kind of bulk up Xavier. Here, we're going to get... Gabor down to ranged with that immunity just as was requested in chat 
Uh, this is such a great play. There's no way to touch him. He does get boosted for every dwarf you play. Uh, the resilience is quite valuable too. Played to melee row. One of the better cards in the game in my opinion. Especially for that resilience play. Uh, here, uh, this three point damage from Yarpin is not going to do much at all, if anything. So instead we're going to be looking for uh, Xavier Moran. And he does go to melee row. But Xavier is just going to boost himself at the end of every turn he has armor. And he's going to get himself an armor every time you play a dwarf. But yeah, I think my opponent here is saying, watch for the random Scorcher Igni in chat. I think it's possible, although this does ring to me as a bit of a devotion deck. Uh, now we can let this go up, but I do think uh, hitting that down would be valuable. Just to prevent the boost, uh, in case the opponent wants to play some kind of removal. If they're just playing dwarves, he's obviously going to get that back. Not much we can do about it. Uh, again, this Mahakam Forge is really valuable on the Yarpin. It plays for 7 points. Uh, so we're going to use uh, Miner to try to get him boost and armor. Here's the opponent's Yarpin coming down. Uh, this tempering, I think, mostly coming down for points. Really good play from the opponent. And they play basically the same play here, just damaging that Xavier in the event that I don't have dwarves. All going to come down to these last couple cards. Mahakam Defender is playing really well for the opponent. Uh, Mercenary is being flat again. I just I really don't like this card at whatever it is is not a dwarf left in hand So I think we are about to get wrecked uh, Which is always fun um, Here we'll just play Zolt in the melee uh, Scorch would kill his own units so it would it would be uh, an Igni against uh, Xavier that would cause us some real problems uh, might be a heat wave against Xavier. Or might just actually be another tempering. Ooh, Great Oak. Great Oak coming down for 12 total points. Uh, not quite finishing it off. So here we go. Use Miner. That's going to play for 4 points. And then we use this Defender to table us up. And we lose by 2 points. They're really close. So uh, I think some kind of misplays by us in round 1 really led to suboptimal results but really close uh i think you guys probably want to see how this plays against other decks though so let's take it against something else oh i think uh i think i also fell victim to what i always tell people not to do stop using karate heat wave against low provision units in round one. Oh. All right, well, how good can we play against non-stop perpetual removal? I actually think dwarves play pretty well against it. And a good reason for that is just because they have so much armor. Um, we do get no Gradian Justice here. Uh, again, missing Oniromancy. Be cool to get Oniromancy before round three, I think. That's kind of my dream for the for today. Just one of the games we play. Uh, the opponent going first. Uh, geez. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to play against these uh, Symbiosis decks. The Figus out right away kind of makes me wonder if they are playing Devotion. Uh, Devotion does play for a lot of points. It is quite fun to use. Um, now here, I like Novogradian Justice with Zoltan. Um, we're going to just play out a bunch of units to melee, per most likely. Um, I do like Sultan Warrior to boost all the units in ranged, but we're going to go all melee this round, I think. Uh, with Moran, uh, Gabor Zegrin. And here, just playing this down for the armor. Zoltan Chevet comes down with crazy amount of armor, and that four point carryover is quite nice.
We're gonna try to save Mahakam Forge for our Yarpen Zegra in round three. Uh, Dunka coming down. Uh, really, really good play from the opponent here. I think we're just gonna try to get out of it as quickly as we can. Uh, we're gonna play uh, Xavier Moran here. We don't need to boost him up. He's gonna get the passive boost. We're gonna see how much removal the opponent wants to play. And we'll go from there. Um, interesting to see all this hand boost come down. Alright, I think here we're just going to kind of get out of this as quickly as we can. Zoltan come down. Just kind of forcing the opponent's hand, seeing what they have to play. I think we can go ahead here and take the pass. The opponent forced to go down two cards uh, and playing out all of their hand boost round one. I don't, I don't like that. I think it's poor choice. Although they have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points of hand boost. So maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, that's like the worst of all the choices, but it's fine. I mean, they didn't need that many points, so. They might just dry pass round two. But that'd be fine with us. We have Gabor in hand. We'll see what they want to do. Notably, we do control a Zoltan. So when you do get this carryover, you do control that Zoltan for Zoltan's company. Pretty nice. Don't need two of these. Guards do play for a reasonable number of points. But I would rather see... Oh, Neuromancy. I just want it. I just want to have it. Uh, so, question in chat right now. Is this an Aglaeus deck, do I think? Uh, chances are better than not, right? This works out fine for us. Kind of like our hand. Uh, my guess would be Aglaeus, Sheldon, or somebody saw our Golden Dragon video, got inspired, and is using Sisthenesis. I, or, Sisthenesis. I gotta say that right. People are gonna get mad at me. So, uh, Sisthenesis is also another option here. Um, I like Miners more than Pyrotechnicians. I don't know what he's gonna be hitting. Alright. Finally. All right, so biggest things we're missing now. Uh, we do really want to get out Yarp and Zigrin. Uh, Polly would be nice, but I don't want to break into these two. Having these chariots would have been good, um, but I'm going to be using Onira on one of these. So even if I did draw into a Dwarven chariot, it wouldn't do me all that much good. I think defenders from that last game is the one thing I'm thinking about trying to find a way to squeeze in and include. All right, so here we just want to start getting working on our dwarves. We're going to go ahead and start just playing Novigradian Justice. Uh, we can just get out a bunch of dwarves this way. I um, think we want to start playing into range row, though. Just because that's where Zoltan Scoundrel is going to go. Uh, Zoltan Warrior, though, plays to melee, so... Uh, but this Zoltan's company does give more value than the two dwarves in that row, so we can play these all the range. Um, Alright, we already saw the defender, so part of me is kind of like, go ahead, have fun. Let me know how it goes for you. Uh, I don't really know what else to say there. We can't quite remove it with nature's rebuke. I don't know. No, another deck I've seen played. Uh, this could just be. Uh... Yes, that would fit perfectly. Um, all right, here I'm gonna use Nature's Rebuke on the six, and that's because of math. Uh, we can go ahead and use Yarpen Zegrin 
to finish off this sage if they play a special card. And then we just have the one other target for Karathi Heatwave. I don't mind the symbiosis. I think our dwarves are actually a little bit better option. I'm going to wait, let, wait for him to go to three before I do that. Um... We don't control a Zoltan, so we aren't going to get benefits of this armor. Um, but we haven't played our Yarpin anyway, so it's not a big deal. I think we're just going to go ahead here and play the Zoltan's company. And we're going to go ahead and just boost up one of them, because why not? I think we can start expecting to see a bunch of specials come out here. Dryad's Caress, getting the Sage boosted back up is a decent play. Um, I think instead here, we'll just be aiming to take out one of these young Dryads. That works for us as well. And he used one, a good look at me, Axe! <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. We're going to need to get three onto the row, four perhaps. So uh, yeah, fun times here. I something's gonna get removed. So like I said. Um, I actually think we'll go for Zoltan to melee. Just gives us out more units. More girth, if you will. Gives us some better options for these other cards, too. Opponent does get last say, so we will need to do some fancy schmancy math. I think because of everything going on, I think I actually want to get Barclay L's down before Zoltan. Again, just as much as we can spread the the love around, the better. Oh, then this Zoltan Scoundrel playing better to range than to melee. That will fill up our row with Mahakam Guard. We can just play Karathi Heatwave last. We did see a bunch of the hand boost come down onto the sages. One thing I will say, a lot of people really frustrated right now, myself included. Ethne could have been the target of some of that hand boost. And when she transforms, it disappears. It's really, really poor synergy. Only like just barely hanging in this match. Waiting for a forest protector to come down to remove something. Nothing tells me that this is... Oh, Ethne is transformed, so it is devotion. So we don't have to worry about uh, Karathi Heatwave. So I think we're okay to... Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six... I don't know why I didn't anticipate that. I just didn't. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I don't know what else to say for myself there. That was just poor point management. Finish off with poisons is a really interesting play. Um, so I guess we can't dump this on to Yarpin. Uh, sages still represent the most value. I mean, we gotta call his bluff, I think. I don't think there's any other way for us to win. Still not enough to win. Pretty brutal! Uh, I think our problem here, and maybe I should rethink my approach on this, is, uh... This deck basically can drop down all that stuff round one and you kind of just want to get out of it and then they are satisfied with a long round three, right? So, 
They're they're okay with an extra card here and there, and the carryover value is so great. That's kind of an interesting deck. I really like it. Okay, we'll do one more. Since people are mad that I'm not getting wins. <laughs> it's a fair criticism of these YouTube videos, but uh, I, I can only control what I can control, and I don't have unlimited amounts of time to just constantly re-film videos. And uh, I'm committed to giving you guys a new deck every day. Um, you know, some people have really amazing decks, and I, I give those to you guys. Probably one or two of those out of the week are really, really good. Fiery Tempo is the one I'd suggest from this week. But yeah, I did I did not expect that Shiru. There's just not enough ways to tailor him. But if you just keep him in deck, have a few other options. Easy peasy. That worked out really well for the opponent. All right, here, mobilization indicates to me uh, one of these kind of like really gross removals. I like agitators here. Um, guards nice with company. Miner is good with pyro. I think just looking for some other stuff. We have extra, okay. Uh, now you can get out Mahakam volunteers. Okay, but this is a much better option. Okay, I'm, I'm happy now. You can get out volunteers and then just use Oniromancy to get out that um, that other card. All right, Blue Stripes Commando really needs some love to that picture, right? Like look how look at the look at the nastiness going on with the head. Such a cool card, though. I do I do love it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right. This is fun. I'm excited. I'm genuinely excited here. Uh, let's get out Miner. I think everybody's going to melee this time. We do, so in this deck, uh, you know, their goal is to just like tempo the shit out of round one. Um, and then get, after they've tempoed up round one, Round two, use Pavetta, get it all back into the deck, and then tutor it all back out again with like Merciless or something of the sort. So we need to be able to put up a bunch of points really quickly. Uh, here, we're just going a little slow. Um, so it does give me a little bit of anxiety, but we do have some flexibility with, uh, with Novogradian Justice. Um, yeah, we just need to be able to tempo and keep pace with the opponent uh, as long and as quick as we can. Alright, we are able to remove one of them, uh, which is helpful just in case they're running like a Voimir to get the boost to all those units. Drog can also cause you some problems, so reinforcements here. All the cards that you want to use, you want to copy these scouts. That way you get both of them going on. I do think uh, Amphibious Assault and Adalia is the one thing this, this opponent is missing. You can use them to copy the Blue Stripes in another, another two times. That can just cause some serious issues. Um, okay, we actually can use Agitator uh, to do some damage up here. So we're going to probably tailor into that soon just trying to line up the best plays here double shice uh xavier's ticking okay this zoltan does four five six seven eight value so 33 it's not quite enough um I like Polly with the Arpen. I feel like that's probably an overcommit. All right, let's look into Onero. Let's go ahead and go for Novogradian Justice here. This is perfect. Now we actually can take the pass.
just making one more thought here. Uh, agitator would work well, but here we'll just take the pass. We go up by one point, and then we just throw on the blitz for round two. Really just need to juice everything out of the opponent that we can. Notably, we need to get them to play both Pavetta and the Tutor to get back out those commandos. Otherwise, it's just so much tempo. Uh, I think there were a total of six of those spawned because we killed one of them. All right, we do get our other resilience card here. That's going to be really helpful. Uh, Zoltan Warrior. I can missing these chariots. Really bad luck with that. Um, I think I'd like them better than that. Okay, that works for one. Uh, for the second, let's see if we can't get back in. Uh kind of like everything we have here actually and this gives armor to all the units it gives some armor back to Zoltan since he loses that at the end of the round now Neuromancy here and a heat wave is probably the most likely solution though we're probably gonna try to keep that again very expected. Out comes Pavetta. She's got to get those cards back into the deck. Um, Zoltan to range gives the most boost. Wish we would have gotten one of these chariots and we could get out the other one with a Nero. It's just so much. Now that would be another six points for Zoltan Warrior. That's not the case. Okay, so here we go range. We're going to boost up all these dwarves. And then we're going to use Polly Dahlberg to move him back up. And then Polly will have that extra two armor we can give to Yarpin. And we're just, we're just throwing on the blitz here. To force out suboptimal plays from Northern Rounds, Northern Realms, who really likes to play their cards the way they like to play their cards. Um, this actually might work out really well for us. All the tempos coming out this round. I don't feel all that necess, uh, all that need. Uh, I don't really want to hang in this round unnecessarily. Um, here they do need to make eight points of play. Uh, which is going to be a little bit difficult without having to trigger this Blue Stripes Commando, but they don't want to trigger that Blue Stripes Commando because that means that they will have to pull all of the other units out of the deck. There's the Heat Wave. Glad to have gotten that out. Um, the opponent here may actually just end up going down a card to maintain. Oh my gosh, so happy for this. Six of those units... So much value, so much tempo, and the heat wave out. So, ex excellently executed bleed. Uh, I, I couldn't have hoped for better, honestly. That was very, very well done. Not to pat myself on the back, but a little bit. A little bit to pat myself on the back. Um, I do like Miner with Yarpin. It does represent 4.8 points of total value. Um, still, I would really like to see the cards that I want to see. And I'm just... We just can't draw these Dwarven Chariots today. Three games in a row. So much value in those. And we just can't quite seem to get them. Um, we didn't use Poly Dahlberg here. So we are going to use him now. Visigato does represent a good bit of worry for us. So we are going to have to take care of him. What if they have Renew? Somebody just posted in chat. That's possible. Um, they have to play it behind Donamir. So I think, uh, especially since it's receiving that boost right now, we're going to just go ahead and heat wave the Donamir. And we're going to be clutching this Nature's Rebuke very, very tightly. We do have a Neuromancy. So we can get another one if we need it. Uh, that's honestly fine. I don't really care. I mean, it does represent some loss of value, but we're going to be playing out so much armor, it doesn't really matter. Here we're going to go down, go ahead and get out Zegrin uh, to range for the immunity. Uh, 
I feel bad for Northern Realms in that, like, uh, they do have, if they get out, of, if they get going, they can't be stopped, but there's just so much stopping them right now. This is perfect, too. He's only three points, so we just come here and just, uh, just wreck nerds. I think we already saw the, uh, I already saw the other other play from Karathi Heatwave get made. Uh, Igni's greater than 0% chance of existing, right? Uh, this is why we saved our nature's rebukes. Opponent really struggling now. Really having a tough time finding value. Uh, I was thinking it might be a Drog deck, but with Ana. Drummer, Tridum coming out late. I kind of think that's less likely. You just lose too much value. That's a great way to get value, though. I am a fan. The armor makes it difficult to use Scoundrel properly. But we don't have to make any tough choices yet. Nothing is really seriously in jeopardy. On Seis could be a little bit annoying here, but not that much. Uh, I do think uh, the one thing that could cause us a little bit of problems would be Visigard. Visigard would come down with a few charges. Um, they need to play him next to a drummer to make sure he doesn't get removed by another one of our, our plays here. Um, he does get some value from this dandelion, though. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Alright, I think, uh... Alright, let's do this. Just to keep him alive. I'm not wanting to play out this Mahakam Forge because we get last say. I can still run some kind of mystery magic. Oh, Nero coming down for Visigar just like I anticipated. We don't have a great way of dealing with him. Uh, he is going to get four charges. I have no I have no idea what those are gonna be used for, so we're gonna go ahead and buff up Yarpin here. Uh, and then we're gonna use Scoundrel to just get some boost going on for our four hombres. Just in case it was like a boiling oil, that's why we wanted to use that. Stody is like one of the best case scenarios for what that final play would be. Uh, this is a little annoying. We do have to play around it a little bit, but uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, here, I think best value three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this plays for six. So I think uh, one of these Mahakam guards is best value. Then we can use the Forge on the Zegrin. Oh, pretty handily beating out Northern Realms, but mostly because we were able to play really well. Um, I think had they played a little smarter, uh, been a little bit more thoughtful about making sure to carry round one, uh, they would have been able to really put the uh, hot irons to our feet. Uh, but we did have some really good stuff going on. I think this is a fun deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have thoughts, comments, whatever, please let me know. Again, if you didn't like the video for whatever reason, I also appreciate that feedback. Um, but until next time, good luck out there. Uh, have fun on the path. And keep on Gwenting. Peace.